In the last episode, we looked at how you could find the point on the efficient frontier that represented the lowest possible portfolio risk. This time, we look at what is arguably an even more valuable point on that efficient frontier, which is the optimal ratio of return over risk in the portfolio. Stay tuned. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. As a trader, you'll benefit from cost-effective market access via multiple trading platforms and APIs. These enable trading and investing in any US stock, over 60 of the most liquid futures contracts, FX and CFDs. You can even diversify your portfolio by buying and selling other traders' strategies as investable assets themselves. So, if all of that sounds interesting, Learn more by clicking on the link top right now or find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. Let's take a quick look at a conceptual chart and then we'll get straight into Excel. So we'll start from where we left off and the green part of the curve here is what's called the minimum variance frontier. And then the black part of the curve is what's called the efficient frontier. This is where we should be selecting our portfolio construction from. But the question remains, how do we know which point on this efficient frontier we should be using? And that's what I'll be attempting to answer today in an Excel example. So this is where we left the spreadsheet last time. We'd calculated the minimum variance frontier, as you can see here in blue. And then we also identified this point on the curve, which represents that minimal risk value. And we did that using the Excel solver. So we're going to use a similar approach today in order to find the optimal point on this efficient frontier. So let's just make our chart a little smaller and I have a template here that we quickly need to complete in order to do that. So we have our two weightings here, the first one for Cisco and the second one here on the right for Pfizer. I'm going to enter this as a calculation so that it automatically adjusts whenever we change the value of the Cisco weighting. So to do that it's simply 1 minus the Cisco weighting which gives us 70 in this case. And then we're going to take the standard deviation and expected daily return calculations and copy those into our new table here. And so because this is now dynamic, if I were to change this to let's say 40%, the Pfizer weighting automatically changes to 60 and the two values here auto recalculate. So just to check that we've got the right values being calculated, if we come here to our previous table and look at 4060, we get 1.312 and 0 0.102. And so we know that these are being calculated correctly. Now, in order to find this optimal point on the efficient frontier, we need to introduce what's called the risk-free rate. So this is the rate of return you could expect to get with effectively zero risk. And of course, there's no such thing as zero risk, but the rate for a three month treasury bond is often used to represent that extremely low risk asset because these bonds are effectively guaranteed by the government. Now bonds currently compared with historical values are very, very low and annually somewhere in the region of 0.7% is what you could expect to get. But because we're doing everything using daily values, I'm also converting that below to a daily value. In order to do the optimization, we're actually going to use the Sharpe ratio. And that's because this tells us what that ratio is of return over risk, but it deducts this risk-free rate from the portfolio return to give us that excess return. And so the equation here is quite simple. It's the rate of return on a daily basis from the stock portfolio minus the risk-free rate of return. And then that gets divided 
by the portfolio standard deviation, which of course is a measure of risk. And so that's coming out on a daily basis as 0 0.0765. And so in order to maximize that ratio of return over risk, we're again going to use the Excel solver. But unlike last time, where we were trying to minimize this risk value, here we're trying to maximize the Sharpe ratio. So if we open up solver and we set our objective value, which of course is the Sharpe ratio here, and this time we want to switch this to maximize, and the value that we're going to change in order to maximize that will be the weighting of Cisco here. And of course, the other values will automatically adjust as this value gets changed. So we click on solve. We can see that it's found a solution. So we'll keep that solution. And we can see that daily Sharpe ratio coming out at 0 0.081. And in order to achieve that maximal value, we need just 7% in our Cisco portfolio with 93% in Pfizer. So just like we plotted the point last time on here, we're going to do that again for this point. So I'm going to add another data series here. And this time I'll just call this optimal portfolio. The X value, of course, is the standard deviation value here. The Y value will be the portfolio expected return. And you can see that that point has now been plotted right here. We'll just make that a little bigger, change the color to make it more visible. There we go. So here we have minimal risk value, and here we have the optimal portfolio value. And you can see that in order to achieve those, we need very different weightings to give us each of those points. Now, if we look at the individual values, these begin to make some sense because to get the minimum risk level, we need a much higher percentage of Cisco stock. And that makes sense because Cisco has a much lower standard deviation of returns than Pfizer. And so in order to get that minimized value, it's necessary to have a much bigger proportion of this. However, when it comes to the risk over return ratio, we need a much larger proportion of Pfizer stock. And you can see the reason why here, when we look at the individual expected daily returns. Pfizer over the last year has returned a much higher level than Cisco. And so you can see how that common sense approach works its way through the equations to give us our ultimate values. Now, in the next episode, I'll be looking at how we can take that optimal portfolio value that we calculated today and see how that can be blended with a risk-free asset in order to produce a portfolio with a desired level of risk. And this will use a technique called the capital allocation line. But of course, all of this that we've done so far has only used two assets. So it's not real world just yet, which is why in the following episodes, I'll be increasing this initially to three assets. So we can see what effect this has on the efficient frontier calculations and the identification of the ideal portfolio structure. So if you're not already subscribed to the Darwin X channel, then make sure you do that and you'll be notified when those episodes become available. But now, until next time, trade safe.